If you're watching this, you have probably heard of Icon, the AI ad maker that got to 6 million ARR in just three weeks since launching by promising a fractional CMO that would continuously make your brand statics that convert automatically with AI. And we have just done that completely for free. So instead of paying them $400, here's the workflow I just made in the last two days, whatever ever done NHN before. And I generally have nothing to sell you because I don't even do NADN. I don't have an agency. I run my own e-commerce brand and that's my only business at the moment. And why I'm showing you this is just because I think it's cool. And hopefully you retweet this, you like it, and I get more people following me on Twitter and maybe down the line, I end up utilizing that following. So if you like this, I'm giving you a lot of source here. This took me literally hours to make and figure out. Um, so it would be quite appreciated. I'm going to start off by running this entire workflow so you can see exactly how it works. So to start off, I am using a, a brand called Respire. I use them for another tweet I did with ads and I just decided to use them again. I've got no affiliation. I don't even know who they are. I just came across it on uh, Atria one day. Um, so here is my product image. And essentially how this works is it takes statics. It takes ads you like. So you have an inspiration folder, whether it's competitors or whatever. You have your own inspiration fold and you have your product image and it's going to put the two together and make you your own statics, which is my exact workflow I do manually on ChatGPT. And now I've automated that entire process. So here you can see my ad inspiration file. I've just got one in here. You can put as many as you want. My setting is for up to 50. I'm using this one ad I found on Twitter that I really liked by Alex Cook. I used it also in my tweet, so I just thought it would make sense to put in here. So you have two files, an ad inspiration file, and you have your product image file. Don't do anything yet. I'm going to run you through how I built this flow out. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test flow. I'm going to run you through it, like what's happening right now. So right now it just went into our ad inspiration file and it's generating a, a templated prompt of what it saw in our ad inspiration file. So it's looking at that inspiration and it's basically creating a template of a prompt that can be applied. Now it's doing the exact same thing in our product photo. So if we look here, you can see it created a visual style overview prompt explaining sort of what it is there and you know how it can sort of use this, how it can adapt this prompt for other images. And now here it's done the same thing. So you can see this product images featured package labeled Respire. So it's analyzed the product exactly. It's created mouse strips. So you can see what the product is. The minimalistic design and soft color palette evoke a sense of tranquility, simplicity, and cleanliness. So now it's putting the vibe of the product across for what it's going to make in our ads. Already pretty crazy. Now, what this one does is it consolidates those two pieces. It consolidates the template from the inspiration file and the product image, and it puts it together in a sort of long brief of everything. So it, you can kind of read here, you know, mouth, your breathing, respire, better life, hold here, tranquility, nature, whatever, you know, whatever's here, it's, it's sort of got our exact vibe perfectly. Just from what I showed you, just from those two files, I haven't done any backend stuff except press execute. So now here we've broken it up into 10 images. You can make as many or as little as you want. I've set the default to making 10 different images. So based on that, it's broken it down into 10 net new concepts, 10 net new ads, which we can even go into Canva and make a bunch of different headlines. So if I look here for this table up, you can see here's one, two, three, four, and it's created the prompt for everything we need here. Now, what it does is it simply creates an image one at a time so we don't overload ChatGPT's API. And so it's gonna create the first image that the first image is done. So you can see it's created the first one and now it's looped back and it's busy creating the second one. So let's look at what image it made. So here it is, we've just created this with AI. And yes, the caveat is, I need to go test the prompt. So you can see the product image is a bit off. The ad itself, the background, the text, you know, the actual vibe of it is perfect. Like this is perfect. It, it's really, really good quality. Um, if you've done any AI generations, this is really good quality. The one thing it needs though is a little bit of tweaking to make the product image better. I agree. That is simply, if I go back to our workflow here, um, and I'm going to let this run and generate our ads while that's happening. So simply what I would do here is, so you can see how it works and I'm going to, I'm going to cover this in a bit more depth is it describes our product here. So I would probably just need to make a better prompt here. You can see this is a very short prompt. I'll probably make a bit more of a detailed prompt to pull more data of how our uh, product image looks. And that way, by making a good prompt there of how our product image looks, 
our output will be better. So let me finish this. Let's finish running this. I'll generate like three or four more ads. We will look at through the ads and then I'm gonna break down sort of how I built this flow in a very simple manner. And I'll probably let you guys like download this template or something. Right, so I'm gonna pause it here. We have generated our first, we've generated about five ads. So let's pull up this. Once again, you can kind of see the slight issue comes across with the product. So essentially what I would wanna do is generate a better prompt when it comes to actually pulling the product data across. But when it comes to creating these sort of images, I mean, this is pretty crazy. Like. It's got the gist of everything. It's simply just describing how the product looks way better. But I mean, this is sick, like really sick. And I think it stands for like everything that their brand stands for. Um, and if you use this for your brand, I mean, what I would do is essentially the goal is going to be to put in an input here. So I just write, you know, like make 10 Father's Day variations, make 10 World holidays coming up, Christmas variations, make Black Friday variation, make, you know, whatever, whatever holiday or whatever event, whatever I want to make the static for, if it's like test the wellness angle, you could just sort of prompt that in and it creates those ads for you. So let's sort of break down how I made this. So the very first thing is just creating a Google Drive that, you know, you put your inspiration files in. So I'm not going to go into too much depth of like technically building out these flows. I'm, I just want to show you, you know, how it all works, what sort of nodes I use. I'm going to click in these because I think that's what will help the most. It takes a bit of playing around. This is my first flow I ever made that, you know, I finished. And what helped me the most was just looking at all of these things and then playing around a bit. And when you have an issue, you've got this AI on the side and you can see it only pulls up one shot at a time, but I use this and it was very helpful. So simply. What this does is it searches the file and it, you know, it, it pulls the image across and then this download file, it will actually like, if we click here, it's going to show you the ad. So it downloads the ad and it's analyzed. Then we've got OpenAI's image analyzer with a prompt basically just describing what it sees. And this, obviously this is quite a good prompt. Um, I would need to make a better prompt over here. Now we do the exact same process, but literally just connecting it to our, to our product images. So. Once again, same, same process. It looks at the image in that file, which is our product image, downloads it so it can actually read the product image. So if we click here, the packet then creates a prompt. So obviously you can see this is a very full prompt. It's not very in depth. I would make this better. Then we pull it across and we consolidate the two prompts in one. And here's something interesting you can do. So it says analyze this prompt, which is a template of a high converting Facebook ad we have built. And then here's the content. So this is from my previous prompt. So all this input stuff is from what was done before. And you can sort of see like these are all previous notes. So if I wanted to pull content from a packet, I could pull this thing across. And this is all dynamic stuff. And I think I may have just added that in there by mistake. Anyways, I'm not actually sure. Anyways, what I what the main point is that what you want to do from that last node where you've created your prompt, you want to reference that because it references your template and your product images. So you can sort of look here, this is called open AI one. So I want to pull that piece across. Uh, so I pull open AI one. What you want to do here is the reason there's two of these is because you can see we are saying analyze the prompt, which is the template. And so we're pulling across the content from open AI because that's our template of what the ads look like. So I add that into the prompt. So here's the first one. And then for the second one, where it says, now we will look at the product image, which is going to be the hero for our ads. I go into this last one and I pull the content from that product image in there. And the output I get is a combination of the templates from the ads and the product image. And so now I'm going to move on. And now that we've kind of combined that, we can actually start the image generation process. So I do something similar here. I chat GPT a really good prompt. I explained to chat GPT what I'm doing. And I pulled the content from my previous prompt that I'm, that speaks about everything. So I just pulled that dynamic uh, module across and I pulled it in here. Um, I said, okay, like here is pretty much everything. Like my, my product image, here's the content. I gave it all the context I want to give it. And then down at the bottom here, you in the chat, to be honest, I'm not actually sure what this does. I copied this from someone else, but you add a chat model. I think that's just so it can actually generate I use GPT-4 and then a structured output passes. So I was got stuck here for a while. Essentially what you want to do is you want to turn this on, require specific output format. So once again, pause when I open these things up and look at what I do and then either come up with your own ideas or copy me to so the structured out. Then once you turn that on, you can use the structured output parser and write something like this, you know, generate from JSON and then just show it how you want to structure it. So here you can see prompt and then 
it structures the prompt here. And the reason you want to do that is, and then you can do as many as you want, but the reason you do that is because we're going to feed it the individual prompts. And I use this thing that splits it or whatever. So if I break it into a table, you can see it's kind of split and then output and a prompt. And essentially all that does is now we can actually feed it into our image gen um, and it's going to understand which one we're giving. So use this loop over items thing. So you can loop it and do it 10 times. You can see we ran it six times before turning it off. I don't think the, the last one completed, but you can look at the first one. So essentially what this does, and I put a little weight here just in case so I don't overload the API. Yeah, so it loops and essentially why it loops is we don't want to break it. I've got a little weight variable here. I don't know if it's necessary to make it shorter, but I don't want to overload my HTTP request. So now what this HTTP request is, what I didn't realize is that if you actually want to access ChatGPT's image gen like four model, you have to go into their API yourself. And so on NADN, you can access OpenAI but this won't give you, their, their little node won't give you access to ChatGPT's image gen. Fortunately, I'm not going to show you how to do it. I struggle with this also. But if you go on YouTube, it's actually all there. And once you find the video, a good video, uh, go, go watch this video here. Highly underrated, this top one here. Connect HTTP request to OpenAI image generator in NADN. Search that. And so if you click into this, what that HTTP request does is it actually generates, I think if we click here, so this is the image, but it's in like some weird code format that as a human, you can't read. And so you just need to convert that into an image. So you go to this convert file node, you can just search convert file. And then yeah, once again, copy, copy everything I've done here. Just, it basically just converts it into an image so that all this weird text can now be seen as an image. And then simply add it to a Google drive. It's going to add the image in, put the drive you want it to add into. And then loop that and over here in this one you tell it how many times you want to do this 10 outputs it's going to loop 10 different things it's pretty good with understanding what you want to do there and that's pretty much it really where you're going to get the biggest benefit now is changing the prompts like i said i could change this this image prompt and the image quality will come out way better which is the only flaw right now is the image pro the image quality is not as good and it's not a flaw in the system it's a personal flaw i made just by not putting enough effort into that prompt. So I'm gonna go now do this for my own brand, change up those prompts. And the only thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to connect this to WhatsApp. So this trigger, I am in a test workflow. So when I press test, it runs the thing. I'm gonna change this trigger to be a WhatsApp trigger. So I have my own N8N AI ads agent on WhatsApp, and I'm gonna be able to send it a message saying, hey, create a Christmas variation. And then it's gonna create 10 variations of ads for my brand for Christmas. And then the only manual thing you have to do is simply, simply you just have to compile your own product image, you have to put your product image and do your own ad inspiration. So in this section, your ad inspiration, I've just got one for now. I'm probably gonna add like 10 or 20 ads I really like from Triatria. If I find statics that I find really cool, I'll put them in here. And that's literally all I'm going to do for my product images. And I'm going to connect, hook it up to my WhatsApp. So on my work phone, I can send a message like, yo, make these images. It's going to get added to my Google Drive and then just put those into the ad account. I don't want to share too much of my personal information. I have just downloaded the JSON file for this. If you like, retweet, share it. I've generally got nothing to sell you besides the fact I think this is cool. And right now, our business philosophy with Ecom is can we make an agent for that or do we have to hire? If we can't make an agent for it, we'll hire. If we can make an agent, we're going to build the first, I don't know, eight-figure brand fully with AI agents, nine-figure. I don't know, let's see what happens.